Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We left you on hold in the past. Call in and tell our call screener and we'll get you first up at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, skin health ingredients, skin health questions, or a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, You can head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business and earn some thank you checks, helping spread the word about the importance and power of a good nutritional supplement program. If you want to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel and Truth Serum and Truth Balm and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, head over to truthtreatments.com. We have a skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com. And, of course, you can purchase products right off the website as well. That's truthtreatments.com. Okay. We are talking about the PPD hormone, specifically about the powerful over-the-counter building substance, DHEA. It's a calming substance. It's helpful for athletes and the elderly. It's anti-stress. It balances out the effects of excess cortisol. It's effective as a, uh, as a supplement for post-surgical patients or anyone dealing with adrenal fatigue issues. DHEA can also be important for women who are going through menopausal symptoms, including hot flashes, insomnia, anxiety. DHEA is also important for bone building. We talked a little bit about Fosamax yesterday. I was kind of ripping on the uh, bisphosphonate drugs, drugs that do nothing to build bone, but are supposedly or or are prescribed for supposedly that reasons. That reason from the British Medical Journal. This came out yesterday. Aldondronate, uh, alendronate, alendronate. That's Fosamax's generic name, alendronate. Alendronate benefits outweigh risk for atypical fracture. This is from the British Medical Journal, authors concluding that even though 15% or nearly 15% of women who took this stuff ended up with bone fractures, hip fractures, according to the authors of this study, these findings support an acceptable balance between benefit and risk with treatment from Fosamax in terms of fracture outcomes. Now, how the heck can a drug that is supposed to make your bones stronger, that's supposed to help you with osteoporosis, cause 8,200 8, out of 62,000 patients to get bone fractures? And then the authors of the study say, well, that's an acceptable risk. I don't think it's an acceptable risk to somebody who got bone fractures. This is the way these statistics work. They figure, well, if it's 15%, that's an acceptable risk. Well, that means 8,200 people took Fosamax expecting to have stronger bones. They ended up with fractured hips. That's not an acceptable risk. That just underscores and highlights the stupidity of our pharmacomedical model. Drugs cannot make bones stronger. If you're asking yourself, why the heck am I taking a, a drug that can cause bone fractures for my bones, you're asking a great question. I can't answer that. 
bone, uh, drugs do not make bones stronger. They block chemistry that changes symptoms, period. Bone, uh, drugs don't make anything stronger. Drugs don't make anything better. Antibiotics perhaps kill bacteria if you're having an infection. That might be an exception. Maybe occasionally chemotherapy in the, in the case of cancer that happens to remit because you took the drugs. That's about it. Certainly not for long-term degenerative health crises like osteoporosis. In the case of Fosmax and bisphosphonate drugs, they block the normal breakdown of bone that is supposed to precede the normal buildup of bone. This is why they cause fractures. They deprive the bone, the, the bone of the remodeling chemistry it needs to build and strengthen itself. According to, this, according to uh, uh, other studies, however, DHEA really strengthens bones. Really strengthen. This is from uh, Washington University, St. Louis University, I should say, and Washington University. A stronger backbone. DHEA hormone replacement increases bone density in older women. That's real bone building. That's not fake bone building. DHEA taken in the right doses, and it's not a lot, has a calming effect, a building effect. It's a health promoting, a health promoting substance. It's a hormone of youth. And this, by the way, can be very important for women who are going through menopause or for younger women trying to conceive a baby. DHEA is very important for the female reproductive system. According to a 2011 article in the Journal of Reproductive Biology and Endocrinology, DHEA supplementation may help improve ovarian function, increase pregnancy chances, lower miscarriage rates. It was also shown to improve, quote, egg and embryo quality, unquote. In other words, female health and reproductive ability and fertility are both markers of youth and good health. And DHEA is a youth and fertility and good health hormone. Whether we're trying to make a baby, whether we're trying to carry a baby to term, whether you got PMS, whether you got missed periods, or whether you got prostate disease or, or erectile dysfunction issues in men. All of these are reproductive issues, at least partially. And you can go to specialists if you want, but it all may be just due to deficiencies in DHEA. It's at least worth a try. So for fertility and reproductive issues for men and women, DHEA, think DHEA, 10 milligrams a day. General health plus fertility and a fully functioning reproductive system go hand in hand. DHEA improves general health and it improves fertility and reproduction. One of the most important examples of a, a, a reproductive hormone challenge in women is a condition called endometriosis. It is an awful miserable experiences anybody who's dealing with endometriosis can tell you and this the doctor strategy is to take out your uterus to take out your uh, your uh, female reproductive system listen there is no good time to have a surgery no matter what it is the body is as a closed system it is not supposed to be cut up when you go into a surgical procedure, your body just thinks it was eaten by a tiger. It doesn't know it, it, it was in surgery. It just thinks a wild animal bit it or is eating it. And it initiates all kinds of stress hormones. All kinds of stress chemistry is switched on by a surgical procedure, any surgical procedure. If you have endometriosis, you're dealing with endometriosis, the solution is not surgery. And by the way, according to the uh, June, the recent issue, the June issue of obstetrics and gynecology, you can, have you can have a surgical procedure for endometriosis, and then they find out you didn't even have endometriosis. The prevalence, this is from, uh, from the June issue of obstetrics and gynecology. The prevalence of surgically confirmed endometriosis is less than 25% among women undergoing a hysterectomy for, for pelvic pain. So you'll go in and they'll say, oh, you have endometriosis. We gotta take out your, uh, we gotta take out your uterus. We gotta to do a hysterectomy. And then they go in and they find, oh, well, you didn't have endometriosis after all. You just had some pain. This is the craziness of our medical model, you guys. Now, endometriosis, is, as anybody who's dealing with it will tell you, it is an awful, awful condition, and it's not all that uncommon, unfortunately. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll continue talking DHEA, female health issues, and your phone calls as well, 844-236-6010 on The Bright Side, right after this. Okay, we're back. 
back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24 7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, also pharmacistben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can check out our skin health blog at truthtreatments.com, also the Truth with Ben Facebook page. And of course, if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. And take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and Truth Serum, all made with lots and lots of the good stuff, especially vitamin C, also vitamin A in our Retinol 5%, 5% Cream, never any preservatives, fragrances, waxes, fillers, emulsifiers, water, and nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my Truth Skin Health products, just the active and functional ingredients, and that's why you'll get results pretty darn quickly, results that build up and get better and better over time, results like smoother skin, softer skin, healthier looking skin. Basically, that's what it's about. It's healthier looking skin. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. We're talking DHEA, love the stuff. DHEA is a, a building hormone, reproductive hormone, fertility hormone, good stuff hormone, youth hormone. DHEA levels drop as we get older. Before we went to break, we were talking about endometriosis which is an absolutely miserable condition. One out of 10 girls or women deal with endometriosis in this country, which was, by the way, unheard of until the uh, early part, middle part, early to middle part of the 20th century. These days, a lot of, there's a lot of studies on endometriosis. It's a subject of great interest. Uh, there's 500 papers a year that are published on endometriosis, dealing with one aspect or another of the condition. Doctors consider it to be mysterious, of unknown cause. It's not mysterious. It's not unknown cause. It's just a body in distress, like all health challenges. The female re reproductive system is very, very dependent on hormones. It runs, well, everything runs on hormones, but the female reproductive system is making hormones and running on hormones. Interestingly, endometriosis is a disease of women who are in their reproductive years. As a woman gets older, her chances for getting endometriosis drops, but for some reason, the mainstream medical model has not caught on to the fact that because endometriosis is a is one of the um, one of the diseases of youth and fertility, you're probably dealing with the hormone estrogen. Estrogen is a growth hormone, and endometriosis is a growth condition. Endometriosis involves excessive growth of a special type of, of tissue that covers the interior of the uterus, the interior of the womb. The womb or the uterus is a, a hollow muscular bag, which is where the embryo will live for nine months. The embryo and the fetus, I should say, will live for nine months as it transforms, as it does its miraculous transformation from a, from a couple of cells into a fully fledged human being. That, my friends, is a pretty amazing, amazing phenomena. How the heck does that happen? It happens every day, but it's no less miraculous because it happens so routinely. In any case, it all goes down in the womb, in the uterus. And the lining of the uterus is extremely important for the health and integrity of this growing fetus. It's called the endometrium. The lining is called the endometrium, and it's made up of two layers. You've got a surface layer and you've got a bottom layer. The surface layer is what sloughs off when a woman has her period. The endometrial lining, as it's called, or the endometrium. So the endometrium, the endometrial lining, is only supposed to go grow in the uterus, in the womb. Unfortunately, sometimes it grows in other places, and that can cause great, great distress. This tissue that lines the uterus turns over every 28 days. That's what a woman's period is, is when the, that lining is sloughed off. Unfortunately, if you have endometriosis, you can actually have the lining in different parts of your body. You can have the lining in your stomach. You can have the lining in your abdomen. You can have the lining in your fallopian tubes. You can have the lining anywhere. And then when you get your period, when a woman gets her period, that part's going to slough off too. And that is miserable. That's called endometriosis. And it's not uncommon. It all has to do with how these layers are growing and where they're growing. Endometriosis is a growth problem has to do with cells growing in the wrong place. And by the way, it's not all that uncommon. 
a significant number of women who complain about problem periods have endometriosis. If you got menstrual cycle problems, good chance that you got it. And more than 50% of women with unexplained fertility are dealing with endometriosis. And if you go to the doctor, he's going to say it's a mystery. We don't know what causes it. Or worse, they're going to say, we're going to take your whole uterus out. Don't let them do it. Do not let them do it. There are wonderful, wonderful nutritional and, and non-toxic and gentle and benign and non-medical strategies that you can use to deal with endometriosis. And if you've listened to this program for even two or three days, you're not going to be surprised when I tell you what they are. They're simple. It's the triangle of disease, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. Endometriosis is about estrogen. And when you have issues with estrogen, the first thing you want to focus on is how you're processing fats through the digestive system. That's any estrogenic issues. The first thing to focus on is how you're processing fats at the digestive system level, and that includes probiotics and digestive enzymes that help your body process fats and essential fatty acids and fatty vitamins and perhaps even bile salts and lecithin and apple cider vinegar and elimination diet and food diary. All of these, all of these strategies, all of these supplements and strategies can help you process your fats more effectively. And this will play a major, major role on any, uh, beneficial role on any estrogenic or for any estrogenic health issues. The second thing you want to do is focus on your blood sugar system. There's a very important relationship between female reproductive issues and dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar. PCOS, endometriosis, infertility, these can all be related to dysglycemia, to messed up blood sugar. That means reduce your intake of sugar. Use nutrients that help your body process sugar, the sweeties from Longevity. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day. Magnesium, copper, taurine, arginine. The B-complex, particularly niacin and thiamine. These are all wonderful supplements for helping your body process sugar. And then work on your adrenal glands. Use adrenal, uh, the PPD hormones for adrenal health. Progesterone, pregnenolone, and DHEA. Everybody with endometriosis should be using progesterone, in my humble opinion. At least pregnenolone or DHEA, but probably progesterone is best. Calm the body down. Make sure you're practicing deep breathing. Many of the nutrients that are important for sugar control are also important for the adrenal glands, particularly magnesium, niacin, vitamin C. You can use something called liquid adrenal extract. That can help. Practicing slow, deep breathing techniques, relaxing the body, massage, hot water, and uh, immersion therapy in hot water, hot tubs, hot showers, hot baths. This is the triangle of disease. It's as simple as that. Always focus on food first, no matter what you're dealing with, particularly if you're dealing with a female reproductive issue. Oh, by the way, fiber can also be important for folks dealing with endometriosis. Fiber plays a, a double role in supporting uh, digestive health if you're dealing with endometriosis. It feeds, it sustains good bacteria, and it helps the body clear out or eliminate excess estrogen. And flax seeds can be really important for the estrogenic system, so grind up your flax seeds and then put some in maybe coconut milk or almond milk, unsweetened coconut milk or almond milk, and make yourself a pudding once a day. Awesome. Anti-endometriosis -endo food. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, we'll get to you in just a second. We do have lines open for you from the National Institute of Health. Some women with PCOS may have adrenal disorders, research suggests, yes, they do, they all do. Not some women, they all do. If you got any kind of health, female reproductive health issue, guaranteed you got some adrenal issues. Is that to say just working on your adrenal glands will make a difference? Well, yeah, it will. It's not gonna take care of the problem completely, but it will make a significant difference and this is where DHEA can come in and all our adrenal health strategies. From the Journal of Gerontology, high fiber diet may promote healthy, disease-free aging. A diet inclusive, inclusive of foods rich in fiber may fuel more successful aging. Why? Improved digestion. And if you use your flax seeds, you'll also get an improved ability to process estrogen and 
you'll get protection from breast cancer, and you'll get protection from other female health issues, and you'll get protein. You know, 30% of flax seeds is protein. If you grind up your, if you grind up 100 grams of flax seeds, which is uh, maybe six tablespoons full of flax seeds, you can get an ounce of protein, 30 grams of protein. That's pretty significant. It's a lot of flax. If you're ever, if you're going to do flax seeds, by the way, you want to start off slowly if you've never done them before, because they can get you can get a, 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 some some discomfort, abdominal discomfort, and bloating, and such. Let's see what else. Food transit time is a key factor in digestive health. That's a this is from Nature Microbiology, the renowned journal, Na uh, Nature Microbiology. How fast food moves through the digestive tract plays a major role in digestive health and in health in general. You want food moving through your digestive system for 12 to 24 hours. You can do a, a beat test to check how fast your food is moving through your digestive system. You want you eat some beets and you want your stools to turn red within 12 to 24 hours. If it takes longer than 24 hours, chances are your food is not moving through the digestive system uh, uh, fast enough. And if it takes less than, say, maybe six hours or seven hours, the food is moving through too fast. Neither condition is good. It's called the beat, beat stool test for food transit time. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's go to Jack in Michigan. Good morning, Jack. How you doing, buddy? Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, sure. I really like your show. Thank um, you. My, my, my beloved has uh, a carotid uh, artery collapse. with uh, Carotid artery collapse. Yeah, with poor circulation, there's a lot of pain. Um, there have been uh, two heart attacks in the last summer that were stress-induced, and the, uh, the CT and the angiogram had showed no blockage, and uh, there's been significant neck pain that started a few months ago. And the well, hang on, medical... hang on. Jack, hang on just a second. You said there's no blockage, but she has carotid artery disease, did you say? Collapse. The oh, collapse. Okay, got it. It's collapse. Got and it. and okay. the, the medical professionals are interested in inserting a stent. Well, the carotid artery, like all arteries, is made up of connective tissue, okay? 25% of your body is made up of connective tissue. So if she has, if she has experienced a carotid artery collapse, that's telling me that there's something going on with her, with her connective tissue. Uh, how old is your, your, your beloved, you say your wife, your girlfriend? How old 47. 47. All right. What's your body type like? Uh, fairly, fairly normal. No, I mean, like, is she lean? Is she buxom? Is she round? Is she? Uh, does she have weight issues? Or is she too skinny? Or, or, or is she skinny? Or does, she, what, what does she tend to be? She's been sick and has lost a lot of weight recently. Okay. Is she built? Is she built like uh, narrow, or is she built broad? Um, I would say I would say pretty much intermediate. Okay. Well, that's not that's that's making it a little tougher. Typically, when you have connective tissue problems, or I shouldn't say typically, but most connective tissue issues are going to appear, especially if it's, it's happening to somebody that young, in somebody who's lean, uh, who's not doesn't. Those are the folks who are going to be more prone towards osteoporosis, wrinkles, and um, vascular issues that have to do with connective tissue. I'm guessing she's got a connective tissue problem. Is there? Any, there's got to be other health challenges. Have you noticed anything? They're, have, they're there, but have you noticed oh. any? Yeah, yeah. There, there have been problems with uh, nutrient absorption. And okay, that's what I was getting at right there. All right, here's the deal. If you have any digestive health issues, it is going to compromise how well your body processes and absorbs, as you say, nutrients for building the system. In addition, in addition to that, the fact that there's problems absorbing nutrients is going to further compromise the digestive system. So you end up with this vicious cycle of breakdown, and that's probably where she's at. So you want to, number one, start patching up the gut, and number two, start pounding in nutrients because she's probably very malnourished at this point. So first things first, patching up the gut. She's got to do an elimination diet. That is where you do a food diary, and then you eliminate problem foods. Guaranteed she's got foods that, give her, that cause her problems. Those are going to need to be eliminated. I'm, well, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I know that I, this is how the body works. So here's the thing. The doctor isn't going to make that connection. And because we don't like to quit eating the foods we love, she's not going to make that connection either. It's like, oh, I don't have a heart. I don't have a digestive problem. I got a heart problem. What's the, why are they, they're separate? No, they're not. They're part of the same system. It's called the biological system. Does that, you follow me here? It, it doesn't seem like they're connected to the, to the uninitiated, and the uninitiated include your doctor. So it seems like they're separate systems. They're not. So you got to patch up the gut. Elimination diet, a food diary, and then elimination diet. Do you know what I mean when I say that? You write down everything you eat, 
and then you eliminate problem foods. It helps if you just eat one type of food, and that way you can isolate what the problems are. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to patch up the gut, and there's many ways to do it. I'd be doing bone soup right away. That is cartilage, uh, cartilage containing soup, liquid cartilage basically, and that can help build up the gut. The fucoidin Z from longevity can help. Um, anything that's mucilaginous. Uh, yeah, the glucogel, absolutely, 100%. I was going to get to that, but yes, that'll help the gut. That'll also help the, the, the connective tissue and the, and the circulation. Um, gelatin also is important. That's going to be in your bone soup in addition to the glucogel caps. Vitamin C works with the glucogel caps. That's also going to be important. And then anything mucilaginous like aloe and noni, in addition to the fucoidin Z, can help. Make absolutely 100% sure she's doing a good probiotic supplement like the Nightly Essence. I'd be doing nine of those a day, eating fermented food. Now, the chances are also good she's got some blood sugar issues because those typically will follow long-term uh, digestive health problems, especially if, you're now starting to, if she's now starting to experience uh, circulatory system problems. So making sure she's stabilizing her blood sugar. Use chromium, vanadium, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, staying away from, from, uh, from foods that spike the blood sugar, and then also doing more protein, which of course will do double duty because it'll help build the connective tissue. And then last but most certainly not least, relaxing the body, making sure she's practicing deep breathing techniques, Techniques. If she's got a circulation issue, she's probably, uh, she's probably going to be hypoxic, low blood oxygen. So making sure she's doing her deep breathing techniques. I would be doing uh, zinc picolinate, 50 milligrams a day. I would be doing copper, 2 to 4 milligrams a day. Copper chelate, copper is extremely important for, for collagen production and the health of the, of the blood vessels. Uh, and of course, your ultimate EFAs are important too, and that you'll get that from the Healthy Start Pack in addition to the OsteoFX. So none of this is, a, is medical. It, whether she needs a stent or not is debatable. I can't tell you the answer to that question. But I would certainly, certainly, certainly not just do it because my doctor told me to do it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying yay or nay, but I am saying be very, very skeptical about what your doctor tells you. Very skeptical. Not to say yeah. that he's, he's always wrong, although a lot of the times they are. It's just to say that you don't want to blindly trust your doctor. Never blindly trust a doctor, any doctor, anybody. Don't blindly trust anybody. It's not just doctors. All right, I got to move. Thanks so much for your call. I hope I helped you out, and good luck with everything. God bless you, Jack. Take care, man. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Let's go to New Jersey and say hi to Stan. Good morning, Stan. How you doing, buddy? Good morning. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing great. How can we help you, man? Can I, can I start with a couple of quotes? Sure. This is from a famous cardiologist, my neighbor. He told me two things. One, he looked at me seriously. He said, doctors are the dumbest people on earth. Pretty much. I, I could second. Well, I don't want to say that, but they're in the, they're in the argument. <laughs> That's harsh. That's harsh, Stan. It is harsh. It's worse than lawyers. <laughs> Number two, he said uh, hospitals are the most dangerous places on earth. That's I can I second that one too. Stay out of the hospital. I've worked in many of them. The last place you want to ever be is in a hospital, and I don't mean to rip on my doctor friends. I apologize for that. But the problem is, they don't examine things. They they buy into their memes. They buy into their belief systems, not realizing there are memes and belief systems, and there there's an agenda behind them. And the agenda is not my health or your health or the health of our loved ones or family. The agenda is drugs and selling them. The agenda is surgeries and selling them. The agenda is making a living. The agenda is being a celebrity and making money, the agenda is not often enough, I'm not going to say never, but not often enough about making the patient better. And that's unfortunate and tragic. All right, how can we help you, Stan? Right. Well, here's my issue. I have a relative in her 80s who complains about occasional milky stools. Okay. That's, is that, if that's the worst thing she's got, then she's doing all right. Milk, milk I assume you, she means like pale colored stools. And like, what, she says that the water's milky, she can't see the stools, but that's what's happening. But that has to do with bile. I, I'm, it sounds to me. The color of a stool is, is the brown color, the characteristic color, is a result of bile. And so when the stool is light colored like that, um, that tells me that she's not either produce, she's probably not producing bile. Uh, I'm assuming she has her gallbladder, but if she doesn't have her gallbladder, that can be a problem. Uh, and uh, it can also be a liver issue. And that's really what you're looking at. Now, the fact that it's liquidy is telling me that the stools aren't being held together. And again, that also has to do with the liver and the gallbladder. That's where you want to be focusing on. Get her on the ultimate enzymes with meals. Use lecithin with meals. Smaller amounts of fats. It's really tricky with an 80-year-old person because by the time you're 80, 
you know, for most people, unless they've been really paying attention to what they're doing, for most people, their body is significantly broken down. So it's not like you're going to be turning this around instantly, but you can begin to turn it around instantly. See the distinction? It doesn't mean you're going to completely cure the problem instantly, but you could begin the process instantly. Now, keep in mind, if she's not making bile to the two, uh, a significant, if, she, if her bile production is significantly decreased, which it sounds like it is, she's not absorbing vitamin A. That means uh, she's not going to be building and repairing. She's not absorbing vitamin D, her essential fatty acids, her phytonutrients. So there's a whole range of health challenges that are going to be secondary to her milky stools. Follow what I'm saying? So in addition to working with her bile, and working with the fat absorption, get her on bile salts also, that's another thing. Uh, in addition to all that, you're gonna to wanna to get her her fatty vitamins, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that she's getting her essential fatty acids. I would be on, I'd have her on the healthy start pack right away. Make sure she does all her nutrients with a little bit of food because she's gonna have absorption issues and it wouldn't hurt her to do some uh, probiotics and fermented foods as well. There's tons of things you could do and while you're not gonna turn this thing around entirely right away, you can begin to turn it around right away and that means she's gonna feel better right away. All right, Stan? Got it. Thank you, Ben. Good deal. Have a great day, man. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go to Ben in Florida. Good morning, Ben. How you doing? Uh, good morning, uh, pharmacist. Uh, thank you for taking my call. We appreciate you. God bless you. Listen, thank my you. daughter is 46 years old. She's 18 weeks pregnant. Oh, wow. Uh, she's been, the baby's been diagnosed with Trisemi 18. Okay. She has nausea. Uh, okay. She has ulcerative colitis. She has migraine. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Dr. Did... Wallach, Dr. Wallach put her on a gluten-free diet with, and yeah. a healthy brain and heart pack and the mortalium. Uh, but she she needs more than she, taking... that's a start. That's a start. But she needs way more than that. Now, uh, he, she's got to really, really, really be treating her body super kindly and making sure she's doing lots of stuff. Any foods, not just gluten. Okay, gluten is on the list for sure. Any foods that cause digestive distress, it is an absolute must that they are eliminated. I'm talking, you have no room for error here. Any cortisol or stress that the mother has and that can follow digestive problems is going to affect the baby and the baby's already compromised. You follow what I'm saying? So it is yes. of incredibly, incredibly uh, of vital importance. It's important for us all, but for her, it's even more vital that she starts to pay very close attention to foods that cause digestive distress. At this point, so how, she's going to be. How can she find out? How can she find out what those foods are? I, I mean, I was going to tell you. At this point, it's going to be a little tricky because the the burden on the body from the baby is already causing her to be nauseous. So it's going to be a little bit tricky, but. Write down everything she eats and then eliminate anything that causes digestive distress. There's so many more things here, so let me go a little bit fast. The, the bottom line to everything, though, is any stressors that she has, and that could be stress from nutritional deficiency, it could be stress from blood sugar, it could be stress from problem foods, and it could be stress from a hypoxic or low oxygen state, and it can be stress from emotional or mental or spiritual or psychological reasons as well. So any stresses are going to put a major burden on the body and effect on the baby, as well as her, and it's going to affect the, the baby for the rest of the baby's life. And the baby's already compromised. It's going to make things worse. So you've got to get, eliminate problem foods. You've got to stabilize the blood sugar. You've got to make sure that she's uh, as calm as she can possibly be and practicing deep breathing techniques and treating her, herself and her body with tender, loving care herself and her body and her baby to, with tender, loving care and kindness. Her, uh, she, no stresses, whether they're physiological or psychological. Get her on the healthy star pack right away, or you, she, she's already on that. Ho hopefully she's doing nine of the essential fatty acid capsules a day. I would be doing 12 even. And then anything she could do to support digestive health, including probiotics and fermented foods. That's the ultimate nightly essence and fermented foods, as well as all the digestive supplements you can think of, including bile salts, the ultimate enzymes. Um, the, uh, you could use lecithin with all of her meals. Fat absorption is going to be compromised. So lecithin with all her meals, apple cider vinegar, uh, the fucoidin Z liquid protein such as whey protein the keto fx protein or perhaps uh, liquid protein from bone soup she should be enjoying hormone free antibiotic free bone soup as much as she can and then all the fats that we talked about essential fatty acids eggs can be helpful fish can be helpful anything she could do to get uh, essential fatty acids particularly omega-3 essential fatty acids from fish flax and chia which are important for the baby's brain Okay, Ben, good she, luck with everything. How Congratulations. Can she, how can she keep her supplements down? Should she take them with something so she Yeah, take them uh, with food. 
and do do divided doses, not okay. to do all her supplements all at once. All at once, as much as she can divide her doses, it'll be uh, uh, it'll be easier for her system to uh, to process the nutrients. Forgot about Thanks. zinc too. Twenty uh, fifty milligrams of zinc picolinate a day is very helpful and important. Okay. Thank you. God bless. All right. God bless you, my friend. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And, and there's many more things. There's many, 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 and many more things. I can't be totally comprehensive on this program. My, my goal is to just point you in the right direction and give you some ideas. Denise in Texas, welcome to the Bright Side. Hello. Hello, Denise. What's going on? Hi. So I wanted to address endometriosis and liver cleanse. Okay. Are you speaking from uh, personal experience? Yes. Okay. Let's, let's, I want to hear. Well, I, I did a liver cleanse, and for about three months, I had reprieve from the symptoms. I even went to the doctor and had them test me for endometriosis, and he's like, no, no, this is not what's happening. But, you know, um, during that time of the month for me, feeling like I need to, like, pre-plan two days off from oh, wow. everything because I can't even get out of bed. The pain that's, is so intense. Yeah, that's um, And a liver cleanse has helped temporarily, um, but I would like a... A better solution to the problem. Okay, there's many solutions. What did you do for the liver cleanse? The, first of all, the fact that you cleanse your liver tells you, you that you got all of these issues with fats and toxicity in general. So that's where you're going to want to focus on. What did you do, real quick? Because I only got about a minute. But what did you do for your I liver just, cleanse? I did a basic liver cleanse. I went to the store and bought one that was um, in capsule form and just stayed very consistent with that for the number of days that it told me to. I want to help you. I, I wish I could. Stop. I wish I'd be more time because I'd love to hear what, you, what it was. So let me just tell you real quickly what you want to do. You want to focus on fats and fat absorption, first of all. Probiotics and fermented foods. Eliminate problem foods and use digestive enzymes with all your meals, particularly fatty meals. Make sure you're using lecithin whenever you have fat and make sure you, you, you're using fat nutrients, fat soluble nutrients like the ultimate EFAs. I'd be doing nine or 12 of them a day. Uh, your vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day. Vitamin D3, 5,000 IU a day, although the sun is the best way to get your vitamin D. You can also get vitamin D from foods. That's another good way to do it. 400 IU of vitamin E a day. Look for uh, mixed tocotrienols are probably the best way to do it. And I'd be doing vitamin K2 uh, a day, uh, uh, 5,000 micrograms, or 1,000 to 5,000 micrograms a day. Make sure you're getting enough zinc also, 25 milligrams a day of zinc. And listen on Monday. We're going to finish up uh, with endometriosis, and we'll get you some solutions. I'm just out of time. And thank you for your call. Okay. Needs. appreciate it. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my skin health products at truetreatments.com. If you're dealing with accelerated aging, wrinkles, you want to prevent your accelerated aging or wrinkles, or if you have acne, truthtreatments.com and take a look at our retinol 5% gel. And of course, if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, call 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later, all later folks. Bye for now.